Hello, everyone. I'm just hoping that all of you are fine. Uh, first of all, a little bit of introduction from my side. My name is Komal Muzammil and I'm from Faisalabad. And I am from 48 CTP and have been allocated to Inland Revenue Service of Pakistan. I was posted in Multan right after completion of my specialized training program. But right now, um, I am on study leave uh, in Singapore, and I am studying master's in public policy in Lake One U School of Public Policy. And uh, that's all my, from my introduction. So let's move towards some real business uh, why we're here. So this is just an introductory video to let candidates, the prospective candidates of civil service exams to know about one of the optional subject, which is business administration, right? So first we'll cover about the topics, uh, what are the main topics in this, in the course outline. Then we'll look how to cover these topics uh, in a smart way. And then I'll brief about uh, how to attempt questions in paper and how to make your paper more appealing to the examiner. So this will be the outline of this whole video. So while looking at the syllabus outline, we have five different uh, parts in the syllabus. I'll go through them one by one. Um, I even selected this paper as one of my elective or one of my optional subject in CSS exams. And this paper is quite high scoring. Those people who have done some sort of background in economics or commerce or accounting or business or finance, I would highly recommend that the, these persons should uh, adopt, uh, should uh, choose this paper, cho choose this optional because it's very high scoring relative to other uh, theoretical or social sciences subjects. And it's also uh, a very important subject that if you get landed in one of the groups that relates to sort of uh, business in the country like audit and accounts or inland revenue service these kind of groups then it will be really helpful and those who have a background in this subject it's very easy for them to um, prepare this subject and uh, it's also I would say easy marks for them because uh, in a typical subject, you can score around 50s or 60s, right? Or if you are lucky enough, you'll get, uh, you'll approach 70s, right? But in, uh, in this subject, you can easily score 80 plus and with with much ease with a little with little effort and if you are good with numbers and if you are good with explaining simple uh, managerial theories then this is the subject that you should choose given that it has a high passing rate and given that it also has a high average score ratio this is the best subject that you guys can choose okay so we'll move on uh, to the um, different subjects different parts of the subject. First is the management. This is the basic part. You will just describe some of the theories that are related to management, how organizations um, are organized, what are different types of organizations, what are the different types of management tools that are used by management uh, for uh, to achieve day-to-day uh, -day operations or to, or to achieve organizational goals. That's a very simple theoretical uh, sort of portion that you can prepare. Uh, just giving it a simple read, I would suggest that will give you a whole idea of the subject and you will just be able to prepare the part itself. It, there is no need to memorize things. It's just general knowledge. It's just basic thinking. Uh, anyone uh, who has some idea of an organization and the structures of the organization and the hierarchies that are present in an organization and how do management manages the day-to-day -day operations of an organization, it will be an easy peasy task for them. The second part is HR management. So HR management is something that people are now having specialization in. So it talks about um, what what are the factors that uh, different uh, companies or different organizations are actually looking in in a in a particular candidate, right? And how they how they frame the job opportunities in such a way that they can attract best talent from the from the uh, I would say talent pool in the country, right? And how they can continuously maintain these skills 
and experiential uh, abilities of their existing staff. So, so it's an amalgamation of three to four things. Uh, what does recruiters look in a particular candidate? How do, how do they frame the advertisement? What kind of uh, price they should place for a particular candidate? Like how they uh, formulate a salary package for a particular person and what they should do uh, to maintain the skill level and the abilities of their existing workforce and how they should forecast uh, what kind of knowledge and skills they need in their future employees, right? So that's that's very simple, and it's not it's not you cannot say that it's a very rocket science sort of thing. It's just it's just simple uh, HR management uh, strategies that you need to look into and how um, you uh, how you decide a salary package for a different person and how you actually make the job interesting for people and how you actually keep the people in your organization motivated to work for your own organization and don't leave the organization because if the employee turnout ratio is very high the organization will itself fall employee turnout ratio means that people are leaving this organization so if, if people if people with experience are leaving your organization which means you are not able to hold the talent in your organization itself so that's a bad thing for organization the third part is financial management. I bet this part is the tricky part because for this, you need to have some sort of business or financial background. I would recommend this subject to be taken only by those persons who have a background in financial management or in accounting or these sort of subjects because you need to... Um, you need to evaluate the market interest rates of bonds, the market values of different bonds, how to calculate NPV, net present value, internal rate of return, what does they mean? And um, then uh, there's also the concept of enmities and perpetuities that you have to calculate. Then the uh, concepts of compounding and discounting, these comes in. So this is this is this one part is basically the expert knowledge. If you don't have that knowledge in, uh, then I would not recommend because uh, because th this knowledge doesn't come uh, in the preparation itself, right? You need to like, study the subject itself to have the knowledge and uh, most of the academies are not providing uh, this subject as an optional subject in their in their course or in their program so i would recommend that people who do have this type of skill set in financial management choose this course and uh, yeah, cash flow and budgeting, capital budgeting, that is also a thing uh, where you manage how you how you make operating budgets, how you make um, cash flow budgets. So these, these are the kind of things that you need to do. These are basically totally numerical sort of things. So anybody who is not interesting in not interested in doing with in playing with numbers, don't do it, please. Don't do it. Don't try to do it. Don't try to ruin your answers because if you know this thing, then then there's a high chance that you'll score 20 out of 20 for a for a, for a single question, right? If you get two questions from this part, there's a high probability that you will definitely score 40. Uh, for the two questions that are in this part, right? But if you don't, if you don't have the the right skills in this part, then then it's going to be difficult for you. So don't take it if you don't have any background. Then part fourth comes in, which is uh, regarding operations and supply chain management. This is also very simple. It talks about how the organization should plan their supply chain management th thing, how they should choose at which location we need to operate, where the resources are nearby, where the labor is cheap, where uh, the product market itself um has is been established or is it in preliminary stages so so the organizations the big organizations need to make these decisions when they talk about establishing a new plant in some new geographical location see if coca-cola wants to build a plant in nigeria they will look well, do they have resources there do they have ample labor there do they have electricity there uh these kind of skills and if labor is there what kind of skills they have is it feasible to open that plant there and how and is it cheaper for the organization to build their product in that in that locality and then and ship that product to another location as well so this talks about the capacity issues and the 
and the location strategies and how how businesses operate in a global environment to manage their costs to keep their costs low to keep their profitability and productivity higher and how they link their operations uh, in 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 a big supply chain because most of the companies are nowadays uh, are are building their business operations based on the supply chain management because they want to uh, address all the loops they are having in their supply chains so they want to have a consistent supply chain for, from the start of buying the raw material to the uh, to the provision of the actual good to the customer so they just want to eliminate the intermediaries in the process so they want to eliminate the intermediaries also but at the lowest possible cost and now the uh, the uh, option of outsourcing also comes into place here that uh, how you outsource different operations, what are the factors you take into account uh, before outsourcing a certain operation or a certain department, right? So again, this can this is a theoretical concept. There is there are no models present in this thing. You just need to read them. There are and you just need to like prepare them heading wise. Then we have uh, supply chain management again. That is. Uh, totally focused on supply chain management concept, how organization man organizations will manage their logistics, what, what are the operations they must indulge into, and what are the operations they must outsource, how they'll balance the demand and supply, and how they'll coordinate with their um, service providers or the retailers or wholesalers or dealers and how they can apply IT in the building of their inventories, uh, these kind of sort of things. The concept of just-in-time inventory system and these kind of concepts come in, right? And uh, so the supply chain management part is actually a part of the uh, operations and supply chain management uh, part four. And then the last part is marketing. So marketing strategies are basically very simple strategies, just like seven P's or four P's, how you brand a product, what, what are the different types of branding techniques you use, what, what is meant by brand loyalty, um, how do brands are able to uh, cap market share, what are different types of organizations, like how a monopoly uh, gets more and more uh, profits from by by through their marketing and through their branding. And then we, you will also study product life cycle in this thing and how you will how you will integrate uh, the process, all the processes along the supply chain with this marketing technique so that your product actually captures more of the market and it gets more of the market share, right? So these are the four main, uh, five, sorry, five main parts um, in this subject. I would highly recommend any person who has a background in finance or account uh, in finance or economics or in business studies, they must choose this subject first of all. Second of all, the subject is not one subject. It's, it's basically five different subjects. So the syllabus is quite, I would say, uh, broad. And but it still have it's it's broad, but it still have some boundaries in place, right? So what you need to do is you just need to place the slavers of the outline in front of you and you just go by by you just go by topic, each topic, right? If you have any of your graduate book, like the e-commerce book or any MBA book that that covers the topic, you can use that. If you have any other book that is um, that you used in your CA or ACCA examinations or any other examination, then you can use that source. But but for the uh, for the for more in depth analysis or for more in depth knowledge, you can also Google. And I would recommend that if you want to achieve like extremely high score, you must need to study some of the models from. Google Scholar articles, right? If you study three to four models from there and you can incorporate those models in these topics, then it would be really easy for you to excel in the exam. And for excelling in, in this exam, you don't only just need to give headings. For numerical questions, which is uh, part three financial management, it's very simple. You just need to solve the question, that's it. But for the other questions, uh, the most important thing is that you 
you pinpoint you answer you don't have to like you know um diverge from the main topic just stay on the main topic if there is any particular model present there just just as product life cycle think about product life cycle or business life life cycle we all know all the four or five stages of the business life life cycle right so what you can do is you can actually draw a business life cycle or product life cycle to give a visual representation, right? So visual representations in your questions do matter. You can make a small flow chart. You can make a small diagram that will help uh, the paper checker or the examiner to, to just look at the diagram and assess that they know, they know things. They, they are very well aware or they are very well versed. So that is one thing that you can do. The other thing that you can do is, suppose the question asks about ratio analysis, right? Uh, or it asks you to uh, prepare a balance sheet for one of the organization and then perform ratio analysis and tell uh, what is the, how is the performance of the business, right? So what you can do is you perform the ratio analysis, then uh, before commenting on the business performance itself, you try to explain what is the significance of the ratio itself, why it is used, why it is being looked, what it explains, right? So it will it will give it will give your analysis a more structured, um, I would say, form. And it will also help the examiner to analyze that you don't only you, you are not just analyzing based on based on what is in your mind. You know what the ratio is, what the formula is, how it is interpreted, why it is useful. Is it useful to the investor? It, is it useful to a creditor? Uh, or is it is it useful to the uh, shareholder or equity holders of the businesses? So you need to know what is the significance of a particular ratio is and how it is to be used for an analysis, right? So these kind of things you can use. Similarly, if you're analyzing a, a, a cash budget, you can look at different pro, uh, prospects that uh, how to, um, if, if there is a cash deficit, what are the probable reasons behind and how they can, actually uh, reduce their cash deficit right so you don't just need to give on reason that they can borrow from any other from from any bank or they can have an overdraft and they can go away with the deficit because that will create a perpetual deficit in the coming quarters as well right or in the coming years as well so that is not a feasible answer what you need to do what you need to like provide there is a sort of rational analysis that they actually can do, which is renegotiating their terms of contract with their suppliers and with their buyers, right? So these are the kind of in-depth analysis and what kind of uh, expenses they are making. Are they like making many advanced expenses? If yes, they should try to reduce that. Um, if they are paying their loan very fast, maybe they can restructure or reschedule the loan itself so that uh, it places less burden on their cash outflows. So this is the kind of analytical analysis that you need to pro provide. I again would highly recommend uh, that any person who is going to take this as an elective has a high chance of scoring 80 plus, but only if you make sure uh, that you come from a, background where you already know the basic underlying concepts of uh, these things. The way to prepare is just keep the outline in front of you. Even if you don't have a book, just Google the topic and start writing uh, from the material that you find outside. Okay. If you can refer to any of the definition to any any journal or article or any book, that would be nice, but references don't need to be mentioned in the paper itself because uh, this ki these kind of subjects don't need referencing. So that's all from my side on this subject for today. I hope that it would be helpful for all of you. If there are any questions, I will be happy to answer all of you. And um, I'm just hoping that you guys perform well. It's a great subject. It's also a great learning opportunity. So just do well, have faith in yourselves. I know this exam is a little bit tiring and uh, it actually places a lot of pressure on you, but just have faith in yourself. You'll do good. Uh, you can do this.
yes, you can do this. Just keep telling this to yourself every day that you can do this. Also, one other question that uh, promptly keeps up, keep, keeps coming back is that how many days do we require to prepare for this particular subject with a with some background in the subject itself, I would say that 10 days would be enough for the preparation of this subject. You don't need much time if you have background. But if you don't have background, you can cover all the parts in, in a week. But for financial management part, if you don't have a background, but you still manage to find a good tutor or a good teacher who can teach you about the concepts and who can teach you how to do the calculations, then you will need another uh, 10 days just for the financial management part but for the theoretical parts uh, uh, from part one to two and four to five one week would be enough if you have a, a background in financial management for the whole course 10 days are enough but if you don't have any background then for financial management part itself you need at least 10 days to prepare that from the scratch okay I think that's all from my side I have a I have tried to explain it um, in a comprehensive manner and tried to cover all the parts. But if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And it was really nice interacting with all of you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye and best of luck.